we have assembled the whole team, including, we call them team stubs. That's what Ethan, that's what Ethan calls them. We call them, Jordan and I call them stinky brothers, which <laughs> we won't say. about me? We're not saying that Ethan is one of the stinky brothers, but the stinky brothers are part of team stubs. So we'll let you draw your own conclusions. We're not not saying that Ethan <laughs> is a stinky brother. We're going to plant trees today and I've got them all out here. Uh, each one has a, a purpose in this process today, but mostly it's going to be an experiment because there's a thousand total trees. If you can imagine how many we really need here, it's probably tens of thousands. So this is kind of a point of just trying to figure out what will work. We're going to use um, the wild plum and the, and the choke cherry on these hills. Like there's these more open slopes, spots that we know we can't get to uh, with a tractor to plant acorns in there. So we're going to try those uh, trees in those areas. We've got red osier dogwood, which is a preferred browse species by the deer. That wants to be in wet spots. So some of these old ponds that are kind of halfway dried up. We'll probably plant those in those spots in a couple of, of locations in the valley. And then we've got some uh, trees for screening, the hybrid willow and the hybrid poplar. So that's the, the basic starting point here. We're going to talk about each uh, tree and, and where we're planting it and why when we actually get into the process of putting them into the ground. Another thing real quick, we've started, uh, Jordan designed some shirts and hats for the boning whitetails page. I think they're pretty cool. And uh, you can find these at shopbowhuntingwhitetails.com and uh, all the proceeds go directly to buying more trees to put on my farm. Um, there's a t-shirt, pretty nice. Proceeds <laughs> also go directly to paying my salary, yeah. so it is greatly appreciated. And, and Jordan's got the sweatshirt. That that actually has egg sandwich stains on no! it. No! <laughs> We're cutting that part out. No, that part stays. <laughs> Dream Farm is brought to you by Whitetail Institute Food Plot Blends, the Hunt Stand Pro Whitetail App, and Hoyt Archery. We're at the first site, and uh, this is more of an upland spot. You can kind of see it behind us here. This is at the end of one of the areas where we planted the acorns uh, back in November. We didn't quite get back into this corner. It's real steep here and it's hard to get the tractor through this. Lots of logs and junk and brush piles. Uh, this was a better spot maybe for just testing out some of the stuff that we're planting today. So although it's upland, it's pretty moist back in here. So I think we can do okay with some of the, that red osier dogwood. It really does like more of a swampy, wet location, whereas the choke cherry and the plums like to be a little bit more upland. They can tolerate, you know, different soil types, but they don't want to be standing in the water quite as much as what the dogwood does. Um, so that's what we're going to do. And again, like I said, this is as much to learn about what we can do on this farm and what the deer will will let us, you know, get away with as it is to actually create this habitat. We're doing about a thousand trees today. Um, and, uh, you know, hand planting a thousand trees is gonna get a little bit tedious. So I'm not looking forward to it, but this is a cool spot. Okay, so this is the wild plum. And you're really supposed to soak the roots really quick before you start putting them in the ground. And uh, I'm sure that's just to prevent shocking the tree too badly. Let's see what we've got here. I mean, they're gonna be fairly easy to plant. Main thing is, you know, the hole can't be uh, too shallow or the root system will turn and point back up. So I've got some clippers and we can clip the bottom of the root off, you know, if, if, they're, if the root is too long to go into the holes that we make. I think we got this down to a system. We could probably use Jordan too as part of our system, but she's back at the back at the pole building editing. So the there's a little pouch that Ethan's got. He's gonna have trees in there. I've got what's called a dibble bar. It's kind of a fancy spade, I guess. And 
um, I'll make the holes and then Ethan's gonna push the trees down into them and then I'll close the holes with the divil bar and then we'll keep moving that way. Uh, it's gonna be a slow process, but uh, hand planting trees is, is a slow process. I've done a lot of it using tree planters over the years where you pull them behind a tractor on the three point hitch and then it opens up a furrow. You put the tree in and then it's got these two closing wheels that come in behind and, and press it down closed. And that's fine as long as everything works perfectly and you don't get any air gaps down in there. Because if you get air gaps down where the root is, then it dries out really bad and the tree dies. Uh, but I've had some success, uh, like I said, using the tractor planter, but we just don't have one of those here. Plus, I don't know that the, tr the terrain where we're going to be planting is going to lend itself to that. We're going to go into a lot of steeper spots before the day's over. So we'll give, we'll give this a try. I, I know it'll work. It's just going to take a long time. The root can't be pointed up. So that's the tricky part with this because, you know, every one of these, if the root system is too long, we're going to have to bust off the bottom of the root or something because you can't have that. They call it like a J root where the root is pointing up and then it just doesn't grow right. Um, not, not a good deal. So well, that wraps up the planting at this site. We ended up with uh, probably about an eighth of an acre total, maybe a little bit more. And it was mostly uh, choke cherry and wild plum. And at the end we put in, I don't know, maybe 50 of the uh, uh, red osier dogwood. And they're, they're recommended to plant in, in low and wet areas. This is a little bit of an upland. I mean, behind us, there's a little valley. That's probably where it needs to go, but it's awful thick and grassy down in there. So we thought we'd try it here just as an experiment and see if they grow here. Uh, so we need to go back to the building, load up with some more and uh, go to a new site and go back to work again. <laughs> it's uh, it is a lot of work, but we're probably a fourth of the way done. How long have we been doing this? Uh, two hours two and a half hours yeah so 10 hours total uh, thousand trees so we're averaging about 100 trees an hour doesn't seem like very many <laughs> we're at our second site now uh, there's a kind of an eroded bank behind me and uh, kind of a, I don't know what you call it steep little area above it and there's it was too steep for us to put the acorns in there when we planted this area if you look over to this side, you can see where we did all the direct nut seeding back in November. And that should start to pop pretty soon. We'll show you that in a future episode and we'll talk more about direct nut seeding and, and how we did that. Uh, we wanna show you the, the uh, uh, results of that before we dive into that any, any more. But we're gonna try to stabilize this bank a little bit with the plum and the choke cherry. I'm sure there's better plants for that. Maybe like a yellow sweet clover or something like that would be better for you know, stabilizing that. But We'll get some trees growing, shrubs growing around here that will hold this better. And then we can always address that, that really bad part later. And then we're gonna go up the valley a little bit further towards the, scra the scrape tree. And there's two dry ponds up there. And the option is to either go in and try to fix those, dig them out and put bentonite in or whatever you have to do to make them hold water, or just plant the red osier dogwood in there and just let that fill in the area where the water would normally be because i'm sure it'll be wet in there most of the time because it will hold water you know for a little while like in the heavy rains it just doesn't hold it permanently it seeps its way through so those are the two sites we're going to next and uh you know i i think it's it's one of those things where you could spend your whole life doing this and you'd never get done <laughs> that's what we've decided but we're gonna get, we're gonna learn a lot from what we did, uh, what we're doing today. And then we'll apply that next year and, and uh, just keep the project going, keep adding to it. You know, each thing that we learn, um, it just makes us that much better at being able to take advantage of the land that we have here available to us, uh, the things that we can plant on it and uh, make it all more productive. We got this location finished up. I think we put, we put six bags somewhere in that neighborhood and they were somewhere around 30 per bag. So 150 to 180 trees were, uh, we're over half done. Uh, 
It'll be interesting to see if they grow here. This location is pretty questionable. I mean, up on top it's not too bad, but on these little slopes, pretty heavy clay. And uh, I just don't know if the choke cherry and the wild plum can grow well in that clay. Uh, we will find out. On all this stuff, we'll bring you updates. You know, each time we see some kind of progress or something uh, got better or worse, we'll talk about it here on the show. We still have a bunch of trees to put in. We're gonna do the dogwood next and uh, and then we'll finish up on the last of the uh, uh, choke cherry and the plum right down there by the building on those steep slopes. We made it to our third location and this is a, uh, a dry pond, I guess you could say. I don't know if it ever held water, but no doubt it's gonna be moist on, on the ground inside there and that's what these red osier dogwood like plus it's kind of cool to have little pockets like that wherever we've got one of these dry ponds we're going to put some of these in and then uh, it's like having a little micro food plot i guess i mean they say that the deer love these and i've never hunted around them so uh it'd be a good test for us they say it's the number one uh browse for deer if you're going to plant browse would be the dogwood, that was your dogwood. It's day two of the tree planting. I put a, uh, a double row of hybrid willow cuttings down along the road to screen off the end of the driveway. And that's that tree will grow about six feet a year from what I understand. So we'll see how they do. That, that could be a possibility too to use for screening around food plots or even uh, the trails that I might use for sneaking in and out of some of my stand locations. So if it does well down there, I'm gonna employ that a few other places on the farm. I think the, the dogwood will be a really cool experiment and then just finding out whether I can grow plum and choke cherry without putting out tree tubes. I think that's gonna be a really important thing to find out too because the trees themselves bind them through the DNR nursery. Um, as an Iowa resident, I can buy them there fairly cheap. I've only got, you know, a dollar, dollar fifty in each of these trees. Well, as soon as you tube them and put T posts in, you're going to have close to nine, nine plus dollars per tree. Well, a thousand trees goes from a thousand dollars to nine thousand dollars really quick. And I, I can't pull that off. Um, so just finding out whether or not I can you know, create habitat by planting it in this way without tubing it is gonna be really important. I started out the morning of day three by going back to the spot where Ethan and I had been planting those red osier dogwood. They really do best in areas with a lot of sunlight and a lot of moisture, like wet soils. So I focused on a, a, a spot near the scrape tree in that valley where there was a pond not really a pond so much as just a wet hole. And uh, we focused, gosh, I bet you a couple hundred of these uh, red osier dogwood right in that spot. And uh, hopefully they'll take off because that would add a nice dimension to that food plot that's down in that valley and make that whole location even more attractive. I'm at my next stop in the tree planting tour. If you look behind me, you can see a spot where the hillside is starting to slough off. And this is fairly common here. Any, any kind of steep slope, we get, I think it starts at the bottom, it kind of loosens up in the spring and then, you know, the whole maybe four inches of topsoil just slides down. And I'm gonna to try to stabilize this with hybrid poplar trees. It's a fast growing tree and I'm gonna start from the bottom and uh, plant the, the bottom edge this year. And you can see it's fairly flat back there. I think it'll hold a tree. And then anything that sloughs after that, hopefully these trees will uh, contain that. And then little by little, I can work my way up the slope until I've got that whole area uh, basically stabilized. And uh, I've got maybe hmm, 75 yards of it here to, to uh, hit. And then I'm gonna move on and plant the choke cherry and the rest of the wild plum. Again, hybrid poplar is a fast growing tree. 
They'll grow several feet a year. So hopefully it puts the root out and we can really get this thing established. And then each year I could add just a few more and layer it up. I'm wrapping up day three by planting, you can see behind me, this steep slope. And I'm putting the choke cherry and the wild plum on there. It's too steep to get the tractor on, otherwise I would do the direct seeding like I've done on the rest of the property, you know, the rest of the pastured area. You know, the go in there where you spray it and then uh, till it up and then spread the acorns and then disc them in. That works really well in spots you can get a tractor to. But here, in this location, it's too steep for that. So my experiment on this uh, round of tree plantings is to find out if I can get this area to produce uh, wild plum and choke cherry, and if so, I can do that on a lot larger scale in the future. So we're we're going to have to wait to see the results of this. We need, you know, some more rains. We need, uh, you know, the temperature to warm up some, and uh, see if these trees spark and take off. And if they do, I'm going to be pretty excited because that means I've got a solution for these really steep areas and hopefully uh, the spot that I tried to uh, correct the, the uh, erosion or the sloughing of the topsoil, uh, that's a problem too. So anyway, it's been a worthwhile project. Anytime you plant trees, you feel like you did something and uh, we definitely put a lot of work into it. I'm looking forward to seeing how this does. If you keep checking back over the coming months, we'll continue to show updates on how these trees are doing. Well, I appreciate you joining me. I'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Dream Farm. And remember to always dream big.